Warning. The following podcast contains politics, leftist politics, the whole truth, justice, American way thing. We live in a time where one has to post this. Progress is a dirty word, such as science and reason. My superheroes would weep. This podcast contains naughty language as well. Yep, we are back with another one. Um, this is about the movies. And yeah, as you saw in that cute little intro, um, James Gunn got fired. Um, we could definitely make a giant two-hour discussion as to why <laughs> this shit happened. Um, but needless to say, I think the intro kind of speaks for itself. You know, there's a kind of a very easy way to go about it, and that's how I went. Now, kind of like heads up, there was um, some support from Dave Bautista, who plays, you know, one of the characters from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, it's kind of a, you know, a, a very different character, you know, than Drax in the comics, but it's not like people give a fuck about Marvel comics if the movies are successful, right? <clears throat> <laughs> so, anyways, so he said that, like, you know, cyber Nazis were the ones to bring about this shit. And um, there were some bloggers, I'm not even going to mention which ones, who, you know, who were like, well, you know, since Gunn is like liberals, uh, it must have been the right wingers. And the thing is, for me, it's like, you know, forget the left and right. It's about the fucking company. You know, the company can do whatever the fuck they want. You know, Disney. Um, my biggest problem is that why does a company that, you know, caters to children has such a giant fucking problem? You know, with Weinstein, you know, he was under Disney with Miramax. Lasseter, who was under, you know, Pixar. Roseanne, it's like, it's almost like quality control doesn't fucking matter as long as you're making money to this company, um, and that's the thing, some people will be like, well, it's a joke, well, I, I don't know, you know, that's why I did that intro, because it's, you know, James Gunn's own words, um, but, you know, some fucking bloggers were like, okay, so we can't blame the ride, who can we blame, right, and they were like, well, he makes movies for Marvel, let's fucking talk shit about dc because they're the opposite right and that's the problem <laughs> you can't fucking do that you know uh, some asshole named movie bob went on like you know this other uh tv channel called hyper rpg and you know he kind of used it to um throw shade at dc any chance he gets so what i suggest everybody does is fucking block him <laughs> You know, like, block you, buddy. <laughs> um, the other thing that we can do is just fucking tell your story. I suggested this a long fucking time ago. And the awesome people at Comic Book Debate, you know, they kind of took it upon themselves to be like, okay, well, DC, DC fans are being targeted. We are being blamed again. 
and compared to Nazis again. <laughs> you know, somebody said they're like, well, you know, the majority of like DC fans are straight white boys, straight white boys. Okay, um, I'm not even going to dignify the stupidity of the comment, but you know, um, Mikey talks um, suggested, hey, let's do the hashtag diverse DC fans. You know, and I was like, okay, fuck yeah. And, um, yeah, um, a lot of people on Twitter have been, you know, sharing their story. You know, I shared mine. Um, and that's the thing, you know, fucking, when you're a legit fan, you, you've been sharing the love of comics forever, you know? Um, and if you're new, you're a new fan, whatever you're new and or old, we have a very, very different background. Um, so yeah, the whole bullshit that, you know, we were to blame for James Gunn fucking firing himself, it's a uh, fucking ridiculous. And it backfired. You know, so now we have a beautiful hashtag to show all the diversity. <laughs> so, you know, and it's fucking ironic that uh, there are so many people who love this gun guy. Now they're uh, gun supporters. I mean, fuck, I thought us and the left were not supposed to do that shit, but, you know, uh, I fucking hate it, you know? Uh, selected outrage is uh, it's fucked up. But anyways, so that's on the intro. Um, <laughs> we have a really, it's a really fun and short uh, podcast. Um, we're going to talk about um, a couple things. Uh, definitely going to review the Shazam and Aquaman, you know, uh, movies. Um, and yeah, well, let's talk about other stuff first. <laughs> uh this is beautiful. No Marvel movies at Comic Con. Fuck yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are some, you know, fucking tiny panels and shit like that. And there's a lot of beautiful cosplayers who made beautiful costumes, you know, beautiful people, real friendly people who went there for Marvel, but no fucking Marvel movies, you know? Uh, they snapped out of existence and, um,. It's almost like nobody gave a fuck about Ant-Man and the Wasp. If I was Disney, I would have been like, well, just name it the Wasp. (laughs) I mean, it's it's a no-brainer, right? But uh, whatever. Anyways, so it's it's kind of fun. It's almost like when bullies don't show up to school and you're like, oh, well, fuck. It's only all the um, marginalized people, all the nerdy people. Wow, the the popular Mouseketeers are not fucking here. Great. Fuck yeah. So yeah, it was kind of fun. Alright, now for something a little bit more somber. Um, there was no announcement for the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. Um, if you haven't already... Um, check out my commentary for Justice League that I uploaded earlier <laughs> a few days ago. Um, it was bittersweet, man, doing that commentary. I had a void of that, that shit for a while, just doing the, the fucking commentary. It's a bitch to do it. You talk for like two fucking hours and, you know, I talk for a living at my work and uh, talking for another two hours is kind of dreadful. You know, it's, it's takes a toll in your throat um but nonetheless you know i i've been avoiding it because i was like yeah we're gonna get a we're gonna get the snyder cut i don't i'm not gonna need this and um yeah (laughs) we uh (sighs) we didn't get it this weekend um big shout out to fiona um poor girl she apologized online she said hey sorry to get your hopes up blah 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 but it's not her fault i mean we all know it's uh, it's it's up to the studio. Um, big shout out to Jay, Jay Oliva. Um, yeah, man, he he said he worked on it and and it does exist. So, you know, I'm just being patient. You know, I in in a million years never expected to see it. Um, but if it does exist and Warner Brothers is gonna release it, hell yeah, bill me up. You know, um, just charge me fifty bucks. I'll I'll freaking pay for it. Whatever. 
uh, or put it on your uh, DC Universe uh, streaming service. I'll do it. I'll, I'll get it. Um, whatever the case may be, one of the things that I find interesting is that if such a cut exists, all right, um, and Henry Cavill said, uh, well, it won't make that much of a difference. What does that mean? Well, um, it won't make a difference on uh, Aquaman or uh, Wonder Woman or Shazam, you know, because Aquaman is underwater. It's an origin story. Um, you know, you have Shazam. It's just kit contained, so that won't make that much of a difference. And, you know, Wonder Woman's in uh, 1984. So, um, why wouldn't make a difference? Now, if I was Henry Cavill, I wouldn't... It's not like he... It's not like himself to throw, throw shit at DC. Or shade, as it were. So, my theory... And I, I know, it's, it's fucking... It's just a theory. If uh, the Justice League Snyder Cut exists... And they already committed to the Legion of Doom with all these uh, bad guys. Um, if I was in charge of the studio, I would allow Snyder to film his movie, you know, based on Ayn Rand. Uh, I think The Fountainhead. I think that's the book that he wants to adapt. Uh, let him do his movie. Let him uh, build the studio. And then um, hire somebody to make Legion of Doom. Make that your second Justice League movie. Um, if once that is done, because, you know, let's face it, if Darkseid shows up, all the other villains are going to be, like, fucking minimal, right? So have your second Justice League movie be that, Legion of Doom, and then um, after that, uh, reach out to Snyder and be like, hey, um, how about this? Um let's release your justice league one your your cut you know with those all this other threatens and footage and then um let's film justice league part two the Zack snyder version as justice league part three you know that way you would have a nice Zack snyder bookend and you would have the legion of doom uh even if Zack snyder doesn't want to do anything uh with justice league they could still use the script as long as he's the producer. You know, he could just sign off and be like, yeah. And then they can add elements to it, you know. Um, I don't know. It seems kind of nice that way. Um, but I, I'm not losing faith, you know. Um, Snyder has been teasing a bunch of cool stuff. Um, he knows it's good. Jay Oliva knows it's good. Um, a lot of people, you know, have high hopes for it. So the fact that, you know, we didn't see it at Comic-Con doesn't mean it's, like, never going to fucking happen. Um, I, however, I have, uh, res not resigned, but I have not lost hope. Um, I am going to give in and, and buy the physical tomorrow. Probably want to go pick up a uh, player, ready player one. I'm going to go and probably get it on 4k. I know it's uh, whatever, but you know, I'll, I'll probably, do myself a favor and buy the Snyder Cut maybe two or three times, you know. Even if there's like a two hundred dollar collector's edition, just just, just give it to me. <laughs> so yeah, chaps, don't lose hope. It's all good. Speaking of not losing hope, Superman died. <laughs> just kidding. Um, the, the death of Superman. You know they're kind of a uh, adapting the. The comic book saga again. Um, I I liked the first one, Death of Superman, um, the one Warner Brothers Animation released prior. Um, I think Anne Heche played Lois Lane, which you know it's fine. Um, it was okay, you know. I I own it on DVD. I haven't repurchased it on Blu-ray. Uh, this one, however, looks really really interesting. It looks uh, within continuity, um, but it is a two-parter. And much like The Dark Knight Returns by J. Oliva, um, I didn't buy Volume 1 or 2. I waited until it was like one movie so I could just pop it in and just enjoy it. And I got a beautiful documentary on Frank Miller on that one. So I know that I'm being kind of a bad DC guy, 
and not buying things on <laughs> Blu-rays or discs, but I'm going to wait on this one. It does look really great. All the actors um, doing the voices for the characters, you know, they 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 look hyped and stuff. Um, do yourself a favor and check out, you know, some of the panels or interviews with that cast because they're pretty cool, and um, I will eventually buy it. I'm just going to wait until, the, you know, it comes out on Blu-ray. Um, you know, so, yeah, it's another movie. Yeah, yeah, it's animated, but come on. You know, it's part of uh, DC Films, so I am excited for it. I'm just going to wait uh, until I can probably rent it and then buy it later as a one, you know, uh, two-volume movie. Oh, my goodness. Gal Gadot, lo always looking, um, you know, happy and just adorable. Anyways, uh, she shared this picture on her Instagram. I was going to use um, other pictures, but they were all like, you know, belong to other people. So I'm like, okay, you know, this is a good way to give um, her exposure. Um, yeah, she was at Comic-Con with uh, Patty Jenkins and with the... Uh, you know, um, amazing Chris Pine, who played, um, Steve Trevor. If you haven't seen the first Wonder Woman movie, do yourself a favor and do it. Guess what? I also have a commentary on it that I added last week. I was pretty damn busy last week. And yeah, uh, I now have all commentaries on all DC films. <laughs> I keep using that, that one, or DCEU, as the fans, you know, want to call it which is fine. Um, yeah, so I have commentary on Wonder Woman. Do yourself a favor and check it out. Otherwise, I will spoil stuff for you. Um, so Steve Trevor died. <laughs> and I was not expecting it because it would be like, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Imagine if Zack Snyder killed Lois Lane. I mean, fuck. You know, it would uh, be shocking and everybody would be pissed off. So um, I was shocked and sad. I always figure that, like, um, you know, maybe he survived and Diana sent him off to Paradise Island to live ageless, you know? That might have been like, hey, you're going to live forever or something, you know? You're going to slow down your aging process. I don't know, but it seemed uh, like a fine idea. Um, you know, so he's back, and there is a, a panel on... YouTube that you should definitely check out because they do speak about why the film is set in 1984. Um, a lot of people made it, the references that it's kind of a uh, George Orwell reference. Um, you know, kind of um, Big Brother oppressing the little person. Which is pretty interesting because everybody was like, yay, it's going to be fun and happy in the 80s. Woohoo! Yeah, you know, Patty Jenkins does set the record straight. It's like, yeah, you know, in '84, we do we did realize back then that you know we could um, we could help out with the uh, Africa famine or that we need to start taking care of the climate, you know, uh, the the Earth, you know, uh, environment and stuff like that. So she said that we did become aware of we could do our best. We were enlightened. Uh, but it was also the height of the uh, nuclear armament. So there is a beautiful dichotomy right there. Yeah, it's going to be bright, happy, and beautiful as a movie. But it's also going to be fucked up. So for everybody out there who's like, Oh my god, they're leaving the DZEU Zack Snyder universe. It's like, well, not really. Um, <laughs> you know, the fact that Warner Brothers doubled down and made a suicide squad and they're making um legion of doom they know that our villains fucking rule there's even a lego video game about it um so they're not gonna drop the ball and be like well we're just gonna like we don't all our stupid uh oh, our villains making them all stupid no fuck that um you know i think it's gonna be pretty fucking dark as far as nuclear armament and you know, remember, it was very fucking... Like, World War One made Diana not interact with mankind for a while. You know, she she went into hiding. And same thing with this one. You know, um, she's going to be more disillusioned. And, uh, you know, 
only Doomsday brought her out. You know, she wanted to find the picture of her dead boyfriend. And I think on this one, you're going to know why. So without giving too much spoilers about it, um, you know, I also, I also didn't comment on uh, Kirsten Wig cast as Cheetah. I think um, from what we hear and, you know, from previous incarnations, she's going to be like a friend of Wonder Woman. We see her here in a, in a museum. And we know that Diana uh, works um, in the Louvre Museum in Paris. So, you know, maybe this is how they met. And Diana, you know, um, valued that friendship to be a curator of art. You know, because I think they do start off as uh, as friends. But then, um, you know, Kirsten Wig becomes Cheetah. Um we have over here the um, Injustice version. Um, it's one of the better um, animations that I could find. Um, this is like a hybrid, and you know, half um, cheetah, half human. Uh, that's a pretty cool version. I know that the other version is the one that Alex Ross does, which is kind of more similar to her original appearance, of like kind of like Catwoman, you know, just plain person costume that sort of motif um and one thing that i didn't want to mention but i kind of want to <laughs> it's that who does this guy looks like you know this is from the um wonder woman um animated movie uh directed by the wonderful lauren montgomery who worked under bruce tim for Warner brothers animation She's had a, a few movies. I think the Green Lantern Emerald Lines is also one of them. But anyways, um, who does that guy look like? It almost looks like this guy. They got casted. Now, if you know who the cartoon guy is, you might know who the villain is and how Steve Trevor comes back to life. Um, it's not a big spoiler if you know the comics, but this is just my theory. I think these two guys are the same. Um, and if it is this bad guy, who I think is going to be the bad guy in Wonder Woman 2, fuck. Shit's going to get dark. <laughs> really fucking dark. Oh, man. You guys are in for a treat. Shazam! <laughs> um, yeah, fucking Shazam, dude. Or... The original Captain Marvel, as it were. Um, trailer is fucking awesome. Um, there is this wonderful drawer, and you know we have some collections from uh, the Daily Planet. Um, do yourself a favor and check out the, uh, you know, the possible plot points that are talked about here. Um, I do find, um this director sandberg is like keeping the dc eu alive with all these wonderful references you know anybody who says like oh the, you know they're changing the dc eu name and they're going away from it and i'm like fuck that just look at the time magazine cover you know that's a direct you know reference to man of steel and bbs i mean fuck it's i'm fucking giddy you know uh this other poster you know, Superman is back. Uh, it's wonderful. You know, it's a, it's what a kid growing up worshiping Superman would do. Um, and it's interesting that you know they're just reporting that Amazon Woman and the Batman help combat Lex Luthor's plans. Um, kind of gives you a um, like um, how do I put this? That when doomsday return and you know there were most of the people were gone from the main you know downtown area and doomsday was taken to the harbor a lot of people just didn't fucking analyzed what happened they just knew there was a creature and that you know maybe superman took it so it's kind of interesting that in this one where they go oh yeah superman's back by the way superman must have told them oh yeah wonder woman amazon woman <laughs> and uh the Batman help me. So it must have been something that he disclosed. So it, it's interesting. It's beautiful. You know, it's a great continuity right there. Um, so this is one shot 
from the trailer. Um, this is the wizard, you know, uh, Shazam. If you look at in the back, we have all the empty chairs. Um, and if you know, if you've seen those chairs, man. Oh, New 52 brings a lot of interesting um, things, you know, going from Grant Morrison's Multiversity and um, Earth 3, you know, um, the villain population, the villain Justice League um, that was released by Pandora, a New 52 character. And Pandora ties into uh, DC Rebirth and Doomsday Clock. I know, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's, you know, that's that's how we are. DC Comics fans, we're like, oh my god, look at those chairs. Some, some fucking person just, like, seeing it for the first time, like, why, why is he freaking out a fucking bunch of empty chairs? It's like, dude, you don't know. <laughs> so yeah, pretty cool shot of the wizard. Uh, I think it's, he's played by Dijon. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I really enjoyed this other shot of... Um, Captain Marvel, um, cause he's, you know, basically standing up, he's looking really beefy, really serious, I know that a lot of bloggers did reactions, like looking at the, at the trailer going, <laughs> this is funny, um, you know, that's, it's like fucking, it's like, dude, are, are you a child, do you, do you need to play, play peekaboo or some shit, do, do you want me to bring out the little monkey with a little, little tss, 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 tss? do you need a rubber ducky, I don't know what the fuck, uh, but anyways, for as much fun of this movie is being held as, it is really, really um, serious. Because it's it's like, okay, imagine giving a kid a car. Yeah, it's liberating and it's fucking awesome, but you know, you need money to put on the gas. You need insurance. You need to not fucking crash and die. Um, same thing. We were just talking about the gun debate. Would you give a kid a, a gun? Not really. Um, but there are a lot of shady places in the world where little kids have guns and they think that's powerful. So while, yay, it's a wish fulfillment kind of movie, it's like, dude, you have a lot of power in your hands, kid. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? Uh, and I would not underestimate a child with power. Just look at hackers. Um, I like this shot over here, you know, Captain Marvel just smiling, because he's still a kid, you know, with all these powers, it's like, you know, he's looking kind of, not goofy, but earnestly delightful, you know, he's like, yay, I have powers, and I think the whole support, supportive um, family is going to be really important later on for the sequels. Um, again, this is another serious shot everybody remembers the uh oh my god you're the bad guy you know everybody laughs um but they forgot this look that you know <laughs> billy batson gets it's like oh fuck he's got powers um it's almost it almost parallels um superman punching batman you know after the first uh kryptonite and in, inhaling and it goes oh fuck um, I know there's a nice, beautiful, um, video on YouTube about, uh, DC, Com DC comic movies parallels. And I think that was pointed out there, but I, I totally caught it the first time I was like, yeah, BBS all the way. But yeah, look at Billy Batson. He looks scared shitless. Fuck, I'd be, you know, that's a, you know, that's a powerful villain. Um, this is another favorite shot um it looks like it's uh, some kind of christmas town or whatever some kind of carnival in christmas time and we see a nice shot of um you know captain captain marvel shazam looking like he's gonna kick some some ass so while i do agree that you know this is a kid's movie um somebody had once asked me if i was to do a captain marvel movie um how i i would do it and I, and I said I would do it three individual movies that form a trilogy. I would do a kid's movie for the first one, uh, where Billy Batson is still a kid. Second one is where Billy Batson is a teenager. You know, there's some romance. Um, I would actually 
be interested to have uh, Black Adam in the second one because if you read the not the new 52 but the comic book series called 52 where Black Adam has the love of his life and he's all chilling you know he's really relaxed he's loving his wife he's uh, the ruler of Kandak I think and uh, you know him and his wife Black Adam make the desert bloom and everybody is like oh he's a fucking dictator but all his followers are like we have free water we have free medicine the gods are ruling us again it's awesome um but there's a horrible plan to kill his wife and his kids or his wife's uh, nephew or something and black adam just fucking loses it so and it takes a shell of superheroes to stop him so if you could, if I was to do a sequel, I would have Billy Batson also fall in love, you know, try to woo a girl, you know, in his meek form, um, and try to find like the duality and make peace with it. Um, same thing with the Black Adam, you know, Black Adam being a ruler dictator and um, pitting him against a teenager with powers, and then of course, you know, the third uh, Captain Marvel movie that I would do is um, as an adult you know you you're kind of like meek skinny adult definitely not a hipster <laughs> uh, maybe you run a comic book store and then secretly you're just Sam how fucking cool would that be you know um, and maybe that's where he fights um, you know Superman or Kingdom Come might happen in the future I don't know but I, I think that it would be a beautiful trilogy if you have a childhood, teenager, and adulthood. Um, but anyways, I'm excited for this one. Now, the other movie that everybody was kind of losing their mind over uh, was definitely Aquaman. Um, you know, we had... Um, we all saw the first image of Unite the Seven. Damn, he looked pretty awesome. And that very first image, that's how he enters into this trailer. You know, um, just full on badassery. <laughs> um, starts taking out a bunch of uh, bad guys. So that's a that's a pretty cool first image. But I broke down the trailer, and I kind of picked up um, most of the cast and uh, story tone, um, which is while it's pretty sci-fi and awesome, I think it's also going to be kind of you know um, sad. Um, the way they're doing, um, Ocean Master, they're not going full on, um, crappy two-dimensional villain, so that's kind of nice. Um, the first shot that I really liked was this one, with, uh, Temuira Morrison, who, um, is of, um, Maori, um, descent, um, and Jason Momoa is, um, you know, uh, part Hawaiian, so they get along pretty close, um, you know, um, I first saw Temoira Morrison in a movie called uh, Once Were Warriors. Um, it's about um, how modern life and uh, has been for the Maori tribe. Um, you know, basically they were displaced by colonizers. Um, I'm sorry, Wakanda, but your fantasy has worst real life consequences of uh you know harsh colonization um so it's a movie about um you know the uh, native people being displaced and it's kind of dark and violent um it actually landed him the role of Django Fett because uh, he was a he was a badass in that movie but uh he was also uh, an anti-hero uh, cuz he uh, hit his wife and it was it was sad um, but nonetheless, a uh, wonderful actor, you know, um, and I'm glad that he is, uh, the light keeper, you know, who plays, um, Arthur's dad, um, a surprise to many of us, Nicole Kidman is the, uh, uh, queen that washes, uh, up on shore, kind of like a little mermaid, um, and it's quite beautiful, you know, it's a kind of a nice, uh, tale of biracial love i mean she's a she's a white princess and he's a brown dude but they have this 
very lovely relationship and they have a kid. You know, here's an, a nice, beautiful shot in the daytime, nice sunset. Um, it's kind of beautiful, you know, when you think about it. Uh, their introduction and, the, and they fall in love in the lighthouse and he helps her heal and stuff like that. So it's it's a fairy tale. Um, we move on to this shot where, um, you know, little Arthur is being bullied. Um, a similar scene was seen in uh, Man of Steel. Um, little Clark Kent was uh, reading Plato, the Republic, and uh, some bullies just, you know, want to beat him up. Um, and his friends help him out. You know, mainly his dad and, um, you know, uh, Pete Ross, who helped him out, too. Um, and even in Shazam, uh, Captain Marvel, um, we see one of uh, Billy Batson's friends getting beat up, and Billy Batson stand up for him. So I'm very happy that um, these bowling movies are actually showing uh, real-life issues that these kids face, you know, and uh, they have a message, you know. So if you ever see somebody... Making fun of DC Comics, they're, they're they're fucking assholes. They're bullies. Fuck that shit. Um, you know. And here we have um, little Kit Arthur. You know, with uh, his eyes kind of glowing, um, and he's commanding the fishes behind him. Fairly interesting. I found that we do have a teenage version of Arthur, and I don't know who's sparring with him, but I bet you it's uh, Mira. And if you see that tr uh, quintet, it looks very much like the one he used in, uh, you know, Justice League. So, for instance, if this happened, and he did spar with a with a Mira, um, it would be interesting that when he's called upon by Batman to help out with Steppenwolf. Uh, it makes total sense that he would go and ask Mira, not only for this quintet, but also for some armor, given that, you know, Steppenwolf is part of the new gods, and, you know, Aquaman hasn't really honed in his uh, identity as uh, king of the seven seas. Um, the other part that I liked from the trailer is that when he does, in fact, return, he hugs his dad. And if, I don't know if you can see, but he's wearing jeans. And it's probably after he has the encounter in the submarine. You know, um, very, very interesting and heart-moving, um, you know, moment. Um, coolest thing is that um, there is character development. He is really getting closer to his dad, you know, so that's pretty nice. Um Another thing is that there seems to be some kind of attack against his dad. Um, I did not see Mira inside the truck with them in the trailer, so I'm assuming that she saved them. And I think this is the attack that prompts Arthur to go back and be like, What the fuck, brother? Did you attack me? And speaking of going back to Atlantis, um, there's this beautiful story. Um, everybody in Hall H gasps, or gasp when they saw this shot, you know, we, they're like, whoa, Atlantis, you know, and, um, I did it too, when I saw it at home, my, my girlfriend, my sister, everybody was like, whoa, that looks cool, <laughs> so, this is who we have to thank, you know, um, James Wan, he says, early on, when I was designing the story, and the script, I reached out to DC, I reached out to Zack Snyder as well. I said, hey, could you guys do me a big favor? Please don't go to Atlantis. I really wanted my character to go to Atlantis for the first time, end quotes. Um, the interviewer, the, the response from the interviewer keeps going. It was such a big part of the story that I was writing that if they had him go to Atlantis in Justice League, it would unravel my story that I wanted to tell. Of course, Zack was super cool. Again, Zack was super cool. He was like, okay, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't bone you that way. So in the movie, the first shot is his f sh first shot. We come to the gate of Atlantis, and that is the first shot that we see once we come through the gate of Atlantis. So this is a Zack Snyder shot of Atlantis in a 
Aquaman movie. How fucking cool is that? You know? That's very fucking cool. So, again, uh, Zack Snyder's legacy lives on. And the more we keep talking about it, you know, the better he's going to feel. And maybe Warner Brothers will have him back as a producer. Um, You know? Um, Yeah. I love it. So, here we have Ocean Master, or Orm, as he's commonly known. We have sharks uh, being used as uh, transport. His gaze, fuck, dude, he looks really serious. But again, as I was saying earlier, they want to make him not a plain villain. Um, they want him to long for his brother and actually fear, fear, fear for his brother in in the land dweller uh, land, <laughs> you know, the up here in the surface, surface dweller, you know, because uh, we're fucking up the oceans and everything we touch <laughs> so i think he's got a really good point and i'm i don't know i'm gonna be torn because i really like aquaman uh the other thing is that uh mira is not only going to be just a badass but um she you know um i think aquaman's gonna have to not try to win her heart but just kind of um do something selfless to win her over or to for her to be like yeah this guy's not an asshole you know um you know because in the comics she's really a wonderful character she oh man the thing she can do with water um you know basically kill people just by taking out the water out of their body she's very very powerful so i'm looking forward to what she brings to uh the overall story and also black manta um Unlike we've never seen him before. Um, fucking real. Fucking badass. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's every kid's uh, dream come true. You know? I always thought that he would make a great uh, villain. Kind of like Darth Vader. Um, but it's looking like he might. I mean, nobody's going to touch Darth Vader. Um, as far as iconic status. But he's going to come close. Um, I think that... He's not only going to be the big villain of this movie, but also going to be in Legion of Doom. Oh, yes, please. Please, 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 please. And uh, I'm kind of hoping that Mira and Arthur don't have a kid, because I know it's coming and it's pretty heartbreaking. So, yup. And last but not least, this uh, shot. Um, You see this shot in the trailer, and... Yeah, you get to see a lot of uh, attack vehicles and animals, but there are some gigantic structures in the back, and I don't know if they are gigantic animals or war machines. Either way, this fucking movie is going to be epic and amazing, and I hope uh, James Cameron's paying attention. You know, because in Avatar sequels, he wanted to go to the ocean. All right, and the other thing that... (laughs) Yeah, this is a meme. Um... It kind of goes back to uh, people giving a shit for no reason, you know. We were having so much fun in Comic-Con that all these bloggers are like, uh, hello, please. These DC fans are having too much fun. Can you do something about it? So this is a meme for all the fucking asshole bloggers who keep talking shit about us. Leave us the fuck alone. Also, you know, um, I think the legal terminology for all these movies are DC films still not going to stop me from calling it DCEU, you know? And by the way, check out uh, Film Gob, because he did a uh, breakdown of who came up with this stupid idea that, um, you know, the films were rebranded as Worlds of DC. Um, it was a hater. Don't fall for it. So, yeah. Um, fuck all the haters. And, uh, yeah, let us enjoy our fucking movies, Marvel fans. You know, just fuck off and Hire better directors that are not pedophiles or make jokes about pedophiles. (laughs) Uh, MTV was a Comic-Con, and um, Joe Manganiello was talking about his Deathstroke film. And go ahead and give this person a like and follow. Um, Uber Kryptonian goes by Walt. He scooped out this video uh, from MTV. Here's a little clip. It's like all that 
Slade. Like, what's up with Slade? What's Slade coming back? What's Slade doing? So, um, so if they're asking, I'm going to let them ask the question, right? Because I, I know you love it when I bring this up. But, like, what do you say to them? Like, when they ask you what's what's up? Like, say it's in the works. Yeah. Because it is. Yeah. And I, I really, there's nothing further. Right. <laughs> I can say right. without speaking out of school. Yeah. Because you know, cause I'm a part of a team. I'm a part of a locker room. You don't talk outside the <laughs> locker room. But all I can say is for the for the hardcore fans, um, it's it's in the works. They want it. They want the character to happen. It's just when he happens. Um, and like you're talking about D and D, you want it done yeah. the right way. I know you exactly. want it. Like, and, and they do too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they do too. I think every everybody's yeah. committed to that. So. All right, that wraps it up for our DC uh, Films <laughs> um, Comic-Con review. Um, thank you all for watching, new and old fans. Um, even if I get one watch, I'm still fucking down. Um, I'm going to watch the, uh, I think, hour and a half presentation of their uh, DC um, presentation about their comic books. Gonna read up on some of my comics and maybe I'll do another podcast uh, about Comic Con over the next weekend. I'm kind of tired. I want to enjoy my other day off. All right, D to C at DC.